as we just, my wife plays the worship in the background, and we're just enjoying the Shabbat in the midst of so much chaos throughout the world. We welcome your presence of the Ruach HaKadosh. Oh, how much we love you. How much we praise you. For you are worthy to give praise and honor. Oh, Yahuwah, we, we cry out for Israel. The house of Judah, Yehuda, Benjamin, Ephraim, all of them that are scattered, but the ones that are in Israel right now, that are going through so much junk, so close to the ninth of Av. We just pray right now for our Father, that the veils will come off their eyes, and the blinders and the scales from their ears. And they will hear a voice from within. Saying, my name is Yahuwah. And my Ben's name is Yahushua. And they will hear that voice and stop saying the, the G-O-D's, the L-O-R-D's, the M-E-R-N-C-Y's and all the B-L-E-S-S's and all the pagan words that come out of their mouth. And they just repent. For it's not just in Christianity, Father, we know it's all everywhere. All the tribes and tongues call out on the deity of fortune, G-O-D. And the mighty one of the Baal, L-O-R-D. All religions have a religious spirit of such nature. So we pray right now in the Shem of Yahushua. That there be a mighty tearing away of those veils in the Shem of Yahushua. We welcome you, all the Mishporka, all the Goim and all the Gurim of the lost house, scattered, coming in, waking up. The veils are coming off. The scales are coming off. All this stuff is coming off. And you're coming to know him. We just got to pray for the house of Israel. They, they, they're so bound. I've been in a, in a Jewish home, an Israelite home, Jewish home, a few weeks ago, and they don't even have a Torah. They just have all the Mishnah, all the Talmud. All the garbage, no Torah, no Tanakh, that they just can pray and read. And they all got the translation in English, G-O-D and L-O-R-D's. And I had a sh we had to share and open our beloved friend's eyes. Where is your Torah? Where is your talk? Without the commentaries of Talmud, Oral, and also all the, the magic shows of the Jewish tradition as well with Kabbalism. In Israel, when you turn on the TV, there's over there's actually over like five stations of different sects of Kabbalism. And we're gonna we're gonna share, but this is the ninth, we're getting to the ninth of Av. And the ninth of Av is the topic we're gonna share today. On the fifth month of the ninth of Tishbaav. Avilu. 5774 in the civil calendar. It will start in the evening, the fourth day of the eighth month, the second day of the week, evening. I mean, of the eighth month of our calendar, but in the Gregorian pagan calendar, but it's the fifth month of the Hebraic calendar. Of the, and it will start on the uh, first, second day of the evening, which they call the, the, the pagan day Monday. And it will go to the evening of uh, Tuesday. And people will be will be fasting and praying. And there's a lot of garbage. And I'm going to read some things to you if you do not know. But you can Google it up, the same stuff I did. But, but reading and going through it when I was in Israel, reading it and going through it in their traditional way and seeing all the add-on stuff, all the Kabbalists to add-on, commentary, Rabbi to rabbi information that they 
they claim was orally, but it was actually started to be written for completely around 1000, but like they say, theoretically around 600 to 700, 800, they started putting it all together. But today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna learn on the night of a little bit, and then you can do your own research and do some follow up. So we're gonna start off. Uh, what's amazing is that uh, I'm gonna read a few things to you, and let's see what I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read first of all from uh, Tishbaav of Kabad.org uh, and their uh, writings of information. And I'm just going to read that to you a little bit so you can, uh, I'm going to read them over here on another computer. And excuse me if I'm doing that sideways. But the night of our Tishba'av accommodates the risk of catastrophes to, to, uh, to so severe, it's clearly a day of special curse by Elohim, uh, which I don't believe is a special curse. It should be a time of repentance and Israel's not right. You know, they got the gay parades and they got all kinds of junk down there in Tel Aviv. It's like Venice Beach and Hollywood rolled up in one, you know. And so there's things not right to stop this chain reaction of curses in the land. But it's a time when they repent and pray and they fast. Even though in the scripture, I'm going to show you why they do that. I'm going to give you some reference to it. Some of the reference in scripture that it does exist. So I'm going to go ahead and read over here. I'm sorry, my head's turned that direction. And he says, to commemorate a list of catastrophes, uh, they clearly a day of special curse, especially cursed by Elohim. That's what they claim. Picture this. The year is 1313 BCE, and the Israelites are in the desert, recently having an experience of miraculous exodus, and are now poised to enter the promised land, but first they dispatch a, a, a reconnaissance mission to assist in formulating a, a prudent battle strategy with the 12 spies. The spies return on the eighth day of Av uh, and report that the land is unconquerable. That night, the ninth of Av, uh, the people cry. They insist that they rather go back to, to Egypt. <laughs> the way it is a lot of Christianity and right now, especially right now, the pressure is on. The people say, ah, they'd rather go back to Egypt. Then be slaughtered by the Canaanites. And Akim is highly displeased by this public demonstration of distrust in his, in his power. And consequently, that generation of Israelites never enter the, the Kodesh land. Only their children have that privilege. After wandering in the desert for another 38 years, because they were out there for two, 20, two years already, which we're going to see, the first heckle was also destroyed on the 9th of Av in the year 423 BCE, five centuries later in 69 CE, as the Romans drew closer to the second temple, ready or heckle, ready to torch it. The, the Yehudi were shocked to realize that their second echo was destroyed the same Yom as the first. But the Yehudi rebelled against the Roman rule. They believed that their leader, Simeon Bar Kohaba, would fulfill their messianic longings. But their hopes were cruelly dashed in 133 CE. As the Yehudi rebels were brutally butchered in the final battle at Batar. The date of the massacre, of course, is the 9th of Av. One year after their conquest of Batar, the Romans pl plowed over the Heckel Mount, our nation's Kodesh site. The Yehudi were expelled from the land of the United Kingdom in 1290 or Britland, Engelland, they call it England, which is the land of the deity of Ing, uh, in 1290 CE, you guessed it, Tishta Ba'av, in 1492, the golden age of Spain came to close when Queen Isabella and her husband, for, for excuse me, for the, for Dean, and for Dean, ordered the, that the Yehudi be banished from the land. The, uh, the edict of expulsion was signed.
sign of March 31st, 1492. Now that's when uh, my family also left Spain, which is on my mother's side, the Rizzuti, the Shirelles. And so, uh, and it was uh, in March 31st, 1492, and the Yudi were given exactly four months to put their affairs in order and leave the country. The Hebrew date on which no Yehudi was allowed no longer to remain in the land where he had enjoyed welcome and prosperity. Oh, by now you know it, the ninth of Av. Ready for just one more? World War II for the Holocaust, historians conclude, was exactly the long drawn out conclusion of the war, World War I that began in 1914. And yes, amazingly enough, Germany declared war on Russia, exactly catapulted the first war into motion on the 9th of Av, Tishnem Ba'at. Okay. What do you make of all this? Well, the Yehudis see this as an, another confirmation, not just a coincidence, of the deeply held conviction that history isn't have a, have a zerd, or by chance, events, even the terrible ones, are are, are part of a divine, of, or a set apart plan, have spiritual meanings. The message of time is that everything has a rational purpose, even though we don't understand it. Now I'm going to go to another one that gives a little more uh, in depth of information uh, from another rabbi, another group. And I kind of like it too. Now you, you know that <laughs> the night of Av is going to be Hussein Obama, Hussein Barack Hussein Obama's birthday. Uh, it just so happens that <laughs> that uh, that that particular lightning falling from the skies birthday is on uh, the same day of the ninth of Av this year. It happens to fall this year. It doesn't happen all the time. So so we just pray that. I haven't checked the news this morning because the Shabbat in Israel, they, they shut the, the news down. But I will be checking in a little while because it should be starting, starting up already, the news. Because the nights in the evening, they do an evening broadcast when they're not there during the day Shabbat. And to see what's happened with the war and everything. Because they believe that there could be an intensive attack on the 9th of Av. Or a, uh, uh, that Israel is actually, um, they're, they're destroying all the... They're destroying all the tunnels. Yes, indeed. And they found more tunnels than they perceived. And they're boasting to show a video footage in Al Jazeera uh, TV station showing video footage with body cams of what they're doing in killing uh, IDF soldiers. But this was a, a, a timely move to find those tunnels. They, they were going to plan on the 9th of Av a destructive attack eternally by coming into those kibbutzis and coming in, they found even also uh, some of the soldiers, uh, the Hamas had uniforms underneath it, their uh, black uniforms, and they had dog tags, and there were idea of uniforms with dog tags, and they spoke Hebrew. So they steal the uniforms, and they spoke Hebrew, and uh, they were planning to move into military barracks, speaking Hebrew, and start blasting in strategic locations with suicide bombs and everything else. So this was a, a, a prevention of the 9th of Av, and, and, but they're still destroying these places because I believe that they're, they're I discern and believe that they're looking for a bigger bomb. There's, a, there's several big things that have been delivered to them. Uh, the Israel, the media know, I mean, the, the, the administration know this and the intelligence, and they're really just trying to find that big weapon that could cause problems on everybody, even the Palestinians, and the Catholics and Christians and the Yehudi alike. And so this is, I'm not for what's going on for the innocent of the people, but we must recognize and realize that Hamas, Hamas was voted by those people. It's not the children's fault that the parents voted. We know that the, that the parents voted on behalf of Hamas because they were tempted and lured by money and promises. Oh, sounds familiar here. Broken promises. Uh, they wanted to change. and wanted to change. And so the, the old Palestinian president fled for his life with the Palestinian uh, party to Ramallah to escape. 
Because if you look back at the YouTube, you'll see Hamas executing anybody loyal to existing party of that time. And it would be like the Democrats win the Republican, and then they try to kill all the Republicans off so they don't have another party opposition. So that's, and there's never been an election since after that. So, uh, but the reason why is because the Palestinians were being uh, horribly persecuted, and all the millions and billions of dollars, I mean, they average, if they do the math, every Palestinian can get about 50,000, 60,000 a month. That's right. Every single one, man, woman, child. For all the money that's gone to Arafat, everybody forgot that guy and those terrorist uh, airplane uh, hijacks. I remember there was a little boy. I've seen it on TV. I've seen him on black and white TV and everything. And so they, they, uh, they voted for this Hamas because they thought they, they, they was, it was change and it's brighter at the end of the tunnel. Oh, well, it sounds familiar. And then everything, all the money, the same money they thought they were going to be tempted for dental and medical, it started being diverted into concrete and steel and other stuff instead of medicine and hospitals. Why does the UN got to build a hospital? If they got all that money for each person, for everything, well, it's because it's being diverted for weapons of mass, their form of lightweight methods of mass destruction and plants and plants to wipe Israel off the place of the, of the map. Uh, so we must come to an understanding that they voted for them. The Palestinian party uh, has fled with their lives to, to Ramallah. And so, and that they're protesting on behalf. I know they're protesting because of the children. It's not the children's fault that the parents voted for this guy, Hamas, leader, you know what I mean? Same thing in the United States. Not the children's fault. They're going through it, but the parents voted for it. So, and so as we look at the situation very carefully, uh, there's innocent lives being put in arms way, but at the same token, everybody in the Gaza Strip is now Hamas, out of the Hamas party, and they're forced to stay in the Hamas party, and they're forced to stay around their, their homes and, 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 and hide bombs and missiles and rockets and weapons and, and booby traps on their way out the door. So the, 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 Yehudi go, the Israelites go in there with their, their ministry. I mean, their ministration of, uh, of cleanup crew that they're, they're going to be uh, explode and blow up uh, as they enter the building. And that's happened already many times. And it's sad for these young men, young men, young men, young men, a lot of Americans do. But I just share this with you that, that people must understand that, that the Palestinians under the other party are in Ramallah. And I've been to their border. And then they have the Hamas and the God. So Israel's got two problems. They started out with one. And then Palestinians lost the vote. And then the old president became the president again. He reenacted himself in a different location. And because they started executing Palestinians. You can go back on YouTube and see Hamas when they first took over executing five or six years ago. Just started killing them all. So and you guys must understand that. And then these tunnels and the plot and plan for the night of Av. And the uh, uh, Yahuwah, for whatever reason happened to those three boys, Yahuwah was quickened the administration of Israel, Benjamin and Yahweh and others, to go ahead and they thought there was 20-something tunnels. They thought there was a plan coming, and they saw a little bit, but they didn't know how. So it was aborted. And the rockets are blowing up, self-destruct, shooting backwards. For the, they're going the wrong direction. Of course, Israel is getting the blame. So I just ventilated a little bit in my favor of, my, of the house of Israel. And I just I prayed for the cousins, the, the Ishmaelites, that are truly Ishmaelites, not, not the Edomites, not the, not the ones... From all that, from this, you know, there's so much mixture there. Nobody wants these poor people. No one, no one wants them. None of the Islamic State coalition wants to take them in. They got so much land and money going to them, they can start all over, ten times over somewhere else, and, and be very prosper in a beachfront property in Gaza, but they failed it. And I believe that's enough is enough, you know, with those rockets. And, yeah, and the reason they're, they're, they're failing because they have a, a, a Elohim of Yeshua is Yahuwah. And he's going to protect the apple of his eye of his people of the 
and his children that are calling on his Shem and calling on his name. Even some are not calling on his name. They're calling on privately, secretly, even though they do it quietly, secretly to themselves so they don't get in trouble. But we're calling on the Shem of Yahushua, and we're calling on the Elohim of Yeshorel, the mighty one of Israel, to protect the Israelites. So keep up in prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and read this next portion from another place. And I just want you to understand that that uh, as we get, they think there, there's something else coming in the horizon, another, another, another weapon. So they're searching for it. So give them time and prayer that they find it. Just, that they discern and find exactly where this bigger bomb is. That could be a, like a major harm and hurt to buckle the knees of the citizens to, to, to shut down the, the, the cleanup mop crew that's going on right now. And we pray for the innocent lives of both sides to be protected. So it's the ninth of Av. They call it, you know, Tish Ba'av. An Av Lelouv. And right now we're going to look at in another another accumulation of events. And then we're going to start in the scripture in Bibbar, uh, Numbers in your King James or other translations, chapter 13. And we're going to read the first one that was calculated, but it wasn't figured out till later as they started having more problems. Had those calculated dates. So let's look at uh, in the year 2448 of the Hebrew calendar or the common year of 1312. Spies returning from 40 days in Israel with the evil report of the land of Israel, Yehuda, the Yehudim people cry in despair, give up hope uh, or trust and confidence of entering the land of Yeshorel. So we're going to look at this part before we go to the next catastrophe, because the next one I'm going to read from this other group is called ohr.edu uh, group. Uh, it's a rabbi's website. I don't know if he's still alive. A lot of them are named after certain rabbis that are around no more. But um, I'm not familiar with this particular site. It didn't look like good information. So we're going to look at chapter 13 of, of Midbar. And... Um, and we're going to go ahead and read it. And we're going to have some fun here together. So get your scriptures. Get to Numbers, chapter 13. We're going to read 13 and 14. And we're going to look at some things. And then we're going to go and explore if we have time. And then when the Ebola scare and all this stuff going on timely, this is all man. This is man prepared. You've got to realize that this, the vials in the scripture and, and, and in the book of Revelation, these are man-made vials. You look it up in the Greek, it's a vial. It's a test new vial. And the messenger stands back and they drop it or they go out and do something to create havoc and, and chaos. Now, I want you to know, if you still confess that you're having a chaos day or chaotic day, Stop confessing the word chaos or crisis. Crisis is letter for letter, crisis in Greek. That's right, letter for letter, crisis. And it means you're getting judged with judgment for your sins. So if you say, I'm having a crisis day, what you're doing to bring the sins, to bring it on you. So, you know, you don't have to say that word no more. It's crisis in Greek, letter for letter, it's just pronounced phonetically different. And, uh, but these things that are happening are the sins of man, creating the sins, the turmoil. The wrath of Adonim is going to be from him, but the, tri uh, the tribulation, uh, the seven trumpets and the bowls and the vials, and those, most of those things in the beginning are man's uh, putting on mankind, because, and they're being allowed because of their sins. They're not following Torah, they're not keeping Shabbat, they're not keeping the feast, they don't love Yahuwah, they don't love Hashem. <laughs> and they're not in love with Him and worshiping and praising Him and, and bowing before Him and giving thanks for His feast. And he, he, it's His Shabbat, and He invited us to His Shabbat. So we are being invited to His table today to rest, and we're hearing the word together. So let's go ahead and start from chapter 13. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Send men to spy in the land, to spy out the land of Canaan. Now we're in verse 1. And I'm going to read it because there's importance in here, okay? We're going to read the chapters. Send one man from each tribe of their fathers, every one a leader among them. And by the mouth of Yahuwah, Yahuwah Moshe, Moshe sent them from the wilderness 
of Paran, all of them, all of the men who were the heads of the children of Yasharat. And these were their names from the tribe of Ruban, Shamun, Shamuna, Shamua, son of Kakur, and the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, son of Ori, from the tribe of Yehuda, Caleb, son of Yathana, my God, Caleb, I really like Caleb, he was a bad dude, you know, he, give me the mountains, give me the giants, you know, from the tribe of Yishakar, Yagal, son of Yeshef, from the tribe of Ephraim, Oshua, Yahushu, Yahushu, uh, it's, it's 1954 right here, and it's the son of Nun. Now, this is what we're going to get to when we get to verse 16. He's the son of Nun. Of course, Caleb and, and Yeshua went out. Okay, they say Joshua, but his name was Yeshua here right now, and then they're going to change it. From the tribe of Benjamin, Pati, son of Raphu, the tribe of Jumelian, Gadiel, son of Sodi, from the tribe of Yosef, from the, tri uh, the, uh, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, Gadi, <laughs> the Jewish name, but it also has another meaning. Son of Sushi, from the tribe of Dan, Amuel, son of Gamali, and from the tribe of Asher, Shether, son of Michal, from the tribe of Nephtali, Nephi, son of Wupshi, and from the tribe of Gad, Gabriel, son of Miki, Maki. These are the names of the men who Moshe sent to spy. Look at the verse 16, very careful. The spy of the land. And Moshe called Hoshua, the son of Nun, Yahushua. And that he told him. Hello? You know, I still got to find out how come they, 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 in the beginning of the Exodus and the Numbers and you know, Leviticus, they, they, they pencil with his name, Yahushua, Yahushua, or Yehoshua. It would have more of an O phonetic letter there. But um, but here's where the his name was renamed from, from 1954 in the Hebrew. Hoshua. They put the H, you know, for added phonetic sound, like Hoshua, but it's Hoshua. And when you put Yah Shem 3068 together with it, Yah. And Yeshua means deliver, but salvation by kinsmen deliver. When you look at the Greek, I mean the Hebrew deep root of 1954, and then the deep root uh, comes to Yahs, Yahuas, saved by deliverance of a kinsman redeemer. So he's out here doing his job again now. And Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up here into the south and go up to the mountains. And see what the land is like, and the people who dwell in it, whether strong or weak, whether few or many. And whether the land they dwell in is, is tov or evil, whether the cities they inhabit it are in camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. And you shall be strong and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first fruits of grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Sin, like Sin, because the T is silent, as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron and Abiman, Shishai, and Tamiah, the descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron had been built seven years before Sion in Mishtarim. And they came to the wadi of Ishkol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bore it between the two of them on a pole. Also of the pomegranates and of the figs. That place was called the wadi Ishkol because of the cluster which the men of Yesharal cut down from there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. 
and they went and came to Moshe. Now, they've been in the wilderness for two years already. They've been doing, getting the Torah, getting the right ruling, getting conditioned and training to keep the Sabbath and not go out and get manna or go to, try to get sticks and wood to get all that together on the before Shabbat. And so when they go in for the evening of Shabbat, they're, they're good to go for the next uh, Yom, the next day of life. And Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Yeshurun in the wilderness of Paran at Kadash. And they brought back word of them into all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they reported to him, said, We went to the land where the you sent us, and truly it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. How I many you know to get milk and honey is going to take some work? Because it's going to take some. Some swing and a sling of a sword and a shield, it's a, it's sweat to get those that land. And but the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are walled, very great. And we saw the descendants of Anik there too, the giants, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, while the Hittites and the Yebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Yarin. And Caleb silenced the people before Moshe and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are certainly able, able to overcome it. That's right. So I like about Caleb, this 80, 90-year-old dude, he's ready to go in and go out and take care of business. Of course, he was that age when he left out, but we'll see the age later. But the men of who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they called the children of Israel an evil, excuse me, and they gave the children of Israel an evil repair, report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone is, as spies is a land eating up the inhabitants. Wow, what a bad report. And all the people who we saw are... In it are men of great stature or size. And we saw there the Nephilim, sons of Nani, of the Nephilim. And we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and so we were, we were in their eyes. So, two men, two out of ten, gave a report. Man, give me the giants, man. I want to get home to that land with milk and honey and the grapes and the clusters of stuff so huge and big. Then 14, chapter 14, then all the country lifted up their voices and cried. The people wept as, that night. This is the eve of, of the eighth of, 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 of And all the children of Israel grumbled and moaned and groaned and complained against Moshe and against Aaron and all the congregation said to him, if only we had died in the land of Mislim, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why is Yahuwah bringing us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become a prey? Would it not be better for us to turn back to Mislim? Duh! He opened the sea, destroyed the, the Israelites. Duh! I mean, excuse me, the, the Mislim, pardon me. And duh! He, they conquered other cities on the way that gave you hassles. For, for making the big, for running around out there. So what is with this picture, you know? You should have confidence and encouragement. Uh, give me some giants now, you know? And they said to, to each other, let us appoint a leader and let us turn back to the Mesorim. What? Give me a break, you backsliders. Then Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Yisrael and Yahushua son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Yephuniah, among those who had spied out the land, tore their garments, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceeding good land. If Yahuwah has digitally delighted in us, which he has done so far, then he shall bring us into this land and give it to us a land which flowing with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against Yahuwah, nor fear or have phobia for the people of the land, for they are bread to us. They're our bread, man. Let's take it down. 
Their, their defense has turned away from them, and Yoah is with us. Do not fear them. But all the congregation said to stone with them stones. Oh, give me a break, man. Then the esteem of Yahuwah appeared in the tent of the appointment before all the children of Yeshurun. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, how long shall I be scorned by these people? How long shall I not be trusted by them with all the signs which I have done in their midst? Let me strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them and make of you a nation greater and mightier than they Whoa, he said, we'll start all over and make a lot of babies. No, that's too much work. Moshe said, no, no. Moshe said to Yahuwah, then the Mizrite, uh, Mitzrites shall hear it. For by your power, you brought these people up from the mist. And they shall say to the inhabitants of this land, they have heard that you, Yahuwah, are in the midst of these people. That you, Yahuwah, are seen eye to eye and that your cloud stands before them. You go before them in a column of cloud by day and a column by fire by night. Now, if you shall kill these people as one man, then the, then the nations which have heard of your report shall speak, saying, Because Yahuwah was not able to bring these people into the land which he swore to them to give, to give them, therefore he slew them in the wilderness. And now, I pray, let the power of you be great, as you have spoken, saying, Yahuwah is patient of a great loving commitment, forgiveness, and cro forgiving crookedness and transgressions. Yeah, we were crooked, full of transgression. It's calling Guru Gaga, saying pagan deities, looking at those trees, opening gives, all that pagan stuff we used to do. But he found compassion and pity and love with his toning blood, cleansed us, washed us up, cleaned us up immersed us in his in his tekvilah in his uh, mikvah and rakats of water and just loved on us you know and by no means leaving unpunished visiting the crookedness of the fathers of, of the children of the third and fourth generation please forgive the crookedness of this people according to the to the greatness of your loving commitment as you have forgiven this people from Mishalim even until now and you have said, I shall forgive according to your word. So he interceded, interceded on our behalf. But truly, as I live in all the earth filled with the, with the esteem, splendor, and honor of Yahuwah. For none of these men who have seen my esteem, splendor, and honor, the signs which I did in Mitzanim and in the wilderness, and have tried me now these ten times. Ten, ten times mean... They were ten bad reports. They only gave us a group of the ten report, but they gave us a full report of the two. Yeah, Oshua and Caleb. Caleb. So, but there was ten times, ten times, literally, that this report came back, basically. You shall see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor any of those who scorn me see it, but by my servant Caleb, because he has a different ruha in him and has followed me completely. Of course, he, he uh, Ushua too. And I shall bring it to the land where he went, and his seed shall inherit it. Awesome. Since the Amalekites, Amalekites and the Canaanites are dwelling in the valley turned back toward and set out into the wilderness by the way of the Sea of Reeds. And you have spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, How long shall this evil congregation, this grumbling against me? I have heard the grumbling which the children of Israel are grumbling against me. Say to them, As I live, declares Yahuwah, as you have spoken in my hearing, so I do to you. Hallelujah. The carcass of you who have grumbled, moaned, and groaned against me are going to fall in this wilderness. All of you who are registered, you hear that? Registered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above. Now this is a key scripture because you can go in the future reference and you can count the tribes of how many people were here right there at this time. Excuse me for shaking the camera here, getting excited. All the people that were there right there at that time, 
And when they all died in the remaining of the 40 years of the 38 years in the wilderness, except for 20 years and under, the exact number for each tribe of all the tribes went into the promised land exactly in the amount that was here. That's, that's miraculous. So the ones that died off were replaced in the 38 years, and it was the exact number of men's, men's children or men's sons that were replacing their forefathers of that generation, and they went in with the exact number. They didn't accumulate double up, triple up, bubble up. They actually went in with the exact That's a miracle of itself. It's awesome stuff. None of you except Caleb, son of Yahuna and Yahushua, Yahushua, son of Nun, shall enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in it. But your little ones whom you said would become a prey, I shall bring in, and they shall know the land which you have rejected. But as for you, your caregivers are going to fall in the wilderness, and your sons shall be wanderers in the wilderness forty years, and shall bear your whorings until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness, according to the numbers of the days in which you spied out the land forty days. A day for a year, a day for a year, you are to bear your crookedness forty years, and you shall know my breaking off. I am Yahuwah, I have spoken, I shall do this to all this evil congregation who are meeting against me in this wilderness. They are consumed, and they there, and there they die. And the men whom Moshe sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the card grace grumbled against him by bringing the evil report of the land, the ten men now, even those men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before Yahuwah. Of those men who went to spy out the land, only Yahushua, son of Nun, and Caleb, Caleb son of Raph, remain alive. And when Moshe spoke these words to all the children of Yisrael, the people mourned greatly. Here's the mourning. The ninth of Av. They're mourning, they're fasting, they're crying out, tearing their stuff. And, and they rose up early in the morning, went up to the top of the mountain, saying, See, we have indeed sinned. We should go unto the place which Yahuwah has spoken of by Moshe said, Said, why do you now transgress the mouth of your sins? And you know, it's like a child. Don't cut the grass. They won't cut the grass. It's okay. I'm taking all this away for the week. Oh, go cut the grass. Go cut the grass. You know, they go. They try to they realize they're getting punished. This is the, the first mark of the ninth of Av that took place. And now, you know what we're going to read? We're going to read some more information on different catastrophes. And we need to pray for you. Yes, we got to pray for the United States, man. Because we don't know what's going to happen here for the Ninth of Av. The Ninth of Av had, has had reflections in the past of catastrophes. You know, the World War One, World War II, different stuff. I'm going to read it again, some more information. But we read 2448, the Hebrew year, which is the common year 1312. Now we're going to look at the year 13, 3340. Okay, the year 421, destruction of the first heckle by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar, about 100,000 Jews were killed during the invasion, exile of remaining tribe in, in southern uh, uh, the Malachim or, Malik, Malikim, or the sovereign territory uh, to Babylon and Persia. In the year 70, which is the year of Yahuwah, 3386, excuse me, 3830, the year 70 CE, destruction of the second heckle by Romans under Titus, over 2,500,000 uh, Yehudi died as a result of war, famine, and disease, over uh, 1 million Yehudi exiled to all parts of the Roman Empire 
over a hundred thousand Yehudis sold as slaves by Romans. Yehudi killed and tortured in gladiator games and pagan celebrations. Wow. The next one is in, in the year 132 CE, which is the calendar of Yahuwah, at 3892, Bala Koba, the revolt crushed, Betar destroyed over 100,000 killed. Next one's 133, which is the year 3893, one year later, Turnus Rufus plows site of Echo. Romans build pagan city of Alia Capitolina and the site of Jerusalem. And we know that the site now where they call the Kodesh place, where the wall is and the Dome of the Rock, that's not the real place. It's not the highest place of Sion. Sion. It, the highest place would be when you go to Mount of Olives, you can look down in it, so that's the highest place up there. But they crushed, they took it all down and rebuilt it in Herod's, the second heckle. And then they turned around and um, they destroyed that and what's remaining of that. But that's not the real place, you know, so I don't know what they're complaining about, you know. It's like a trip. Anyway, so uh, let's look at the year now jump from 133 to 1095 CE, which is the year of Yahuwah 4855. First Catholic crusade declares by declared by Pope Urban II. Mm, you want to unite with the Pope, oh, some Jesuit Pope, and some prayer up in there with Hamas. Look what happened seven days later after the prayer. I mean, the, the Hamas just went crazy. Yep, that's right. They did a prayer, right? They got the they got the walking papers, peace, peace, or shalom, shalom, instead of destruction. And matter of fact, I'm working on that word, peace. Don't pray for the peace of Israel, no more. Pray for the shalom of Yesharel. If you pray for peace, you pray for Pac, P A C, French Pax, the, the Catholic Latin word for kissing the feet of the. J Man statue. That's right. That's what Pax is, part of it. Okay. The kiss peace, peace kiss. And also, it is a maritime law agreement that when they come to a foreign land, they say we come in peace. But it basically means we come to take over. We're going to take over the land. But we're going to let you stay and live in it. But we're going to tax you in your own land. So that's peace pact. Okay, we don't want Israel to lose no more land for anything. They have a scriptures with a geographical map of all their land that should be. And I know all of us are coming to our Moshiach show up. But until then, you should declare it. But anyways, so the crusade bring death and destruction of 2,000 Yehudi. Totally obliteration. Many uh, committees and commentaries in the ring land of France. All the communities excuse me, in the real land of France. The next one is 1290, all right? The year 5050, the Hebrew calendar. Expulsion of Yehudi from England, accompanied by programs, uh, pagans, pe pe pograms, excuse me, P-O-G-R-O-M-S, pogroms, and confiscation of books and profit. Mm. And the next one is in 1492, the year 5252 now. Yeah, it's like, you know, a couple hundred years later. Uh, Inquisition in Spain, 1492, and Portugal culminates in the expulsion of the Yehudi from the Ibrim Peninsula. Families separated, many died by drowning. And massive loss of property. They they pushed them into the sea or they tied them up through the water to see if they'd float. That's what the Inquisition used to do. Hey, you want to make peace with those people, man? Yehudi? In Israel, you, you Talmud Sanhedrin over there in Israel right now, hanging out with the Pope when he went to visit you, kissing his ring, bowing the knee, and all that silly stuff, doing that courtesy bow, that's bowing the knee and kissing the ring.
You have no business doing that with the with that popa, that wannabe guy, a Jesuit that wants to start the new world order religion. And here it goes again. Now, 1914, the year 5674 in the Hebrew calendar, 1914. Britain, yeah, that's right. Britain and Russia declare war on Germany. First World War begins. First World War issues unresolved uh, during that old time, ultimately causing Second World War and the Holocaust. 75% of the Yehudim or Yeshurel of the different Scott tribes of Israel, they keep saying one tribe, but it's really all the house of Israel. They, they, they claim them in their little clique, uh, their little assimilation clique like they do now in Israel. All Jews in war zones, the, the Yehudi or Yeshurel in armies of all sides. 120,000 Yehudi casualties in armies. Over 400 uh, pogroms immediately following war in Hungary, Ukraine, Poland, and Russia. The next one was 1942, uh, excuse me, uh, deportations from Warsaw Ghetto to the uh, Treblinka, Treblinka, yeah, concentration camps begin in 1942. And then in 1989, 57-49, the 9th of Av again. These are all the 9th of Av people. Do you hear this? These are all the ninth of Av. This is amazing. And, and then in 1989, Iraq walks out. Iraq walks out of talks with Kuwait. Okay, then in 1994, the deadly bombing of the building of the Amiya, the Yehuda Community Center in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which killed 86 people and wounded some 300 others. That was in 1994. Now we're looking now this uh, second day of the week. They call it the pagan calendar Monday. So and so it could be, now you notice that some of them, uh, the ninth of Av comes the creases, the judgment of their sins on also the, the nations as well as Israel. Because where war started and other things have happened too. So we're praying and we're going to be ready and geared up. You know, when you're in your home and you're doing Shabbat, you got your you got your Shem in the door. Outside the door, you got a Shem. I got a Shem out there. I got a, a, a mezuzah out there that, that has got the scriptures of Isaiah. I have the Paleo Hebrew and modern Hebrew out there in my front door. And um, I got it even in my car. The mark of a sham, and so when you are covered and you're you're under the Passover promises of the atoning blood, the death will cross your door because the atoning blood is on your doorpost. And you look at my video on uh, Eliyahu channel that I have on Goshen, your own little Goshen in the land wherever you're at right now. It might not be in Israel, but you're wherever you're at. In whatever place, if Yahuwah wakes you up in the middle of the night and tells your family, go eat. Go eat breakfast in another state somewhere in some little hick town. Obey him and do it. And be prepared for your stuff at the door like Passover, like Pesha. And be prepared, your children, exercising to go to the car. If the Yahuwah wakes you up in a dream at night and tells you, go do a ride. Just go for a ride with the family. Go visit a cousin. Go visit some. And he tells you, be obedient. Don't roll over and go to sleep. Because of these events coming up. We have to be prepared like we're Israel. We have to be prepared the way they are in Israel too. With their, with their uh, modernized M16 and backpack at the door. And those children join the service 16 and a half, 17. And then they, they, they do their duty. They go home with their rifles and uniform. They go home. And they get too fat for it, they get another uniform. And they got their stuff at the door. They got the, they're got they on call militia all the time for their people. That's why it would be horrible if the Hamas, it would have been horrible for both sides if Hamas tried to come into the cities, in which I know the reserves are packing and people are packing and they're wearing Levi's and tennis shoes or sandals, you know, and they got their stuff and their badge, reserve badge. But be sensitive to the Ruach Kadosh. Be sensitive to him. In these next few days, pray for the, the shalom 
of Yesharel. Pray for the shalom. No more peace pack. Take land. Give some more chunk. Gave up Gaza. You know, I met people in Israel. Ate dinner with them. They never got their money. They got kicked out of Gaza. Lost their house. Got property taken. And some of them got paid in payment plans. A little bit of a mortgage. Like like a like a like an insurance package over here, your house burned out, they give you a new loan to build a new house and relocate and all that. You know, that was awful. They, they lose their, their beachfront property, all that stuff in Gaza, and then they ruined it. They just totally, it's like giving your car to a, a son that's a wrangler, a really terrible son, and the credit card and money, and he comes out with all destroyed, beat up, running the ground, gang banging, shot up, and, and he shows no effort of appreciation of what was given to them. And that's why things have to be tighter and tighter. You can't trust them. You can't trust them to work for them as gardeners, and then you get a tractor and run them over with a car. That's why they, get, they take the Filipinos down there, the Mexicanos, they're going down there, the Latin Americans are going down there to work. Because they can't trust them. It's horrible. And if they can't have friends, and I've met, I've met Jordanians, I've met Palestinians that are, they, you know, they're citizens of Israel. And they love what they said. That they wouldn't have it no other way because if they have it the other way, they wouldn't have their businesses and the finances, and security, and medical like their family does now. And I've met them talking to them because I speak to all races in Israel when I'm there. But I just wanted to encourage you to keep it in prayer. This is a serious time. Now, traditionally, you can go online, look at Kaban and all that stuff, dot org, and look at the traditional, but a lot of it's add on rabbinical Judaism, add on oral Talmud, and a lot of it has Kabbalism. There's ceremonies of fasting and what to eat, not to eat, what to do, not to do. That is totally add on, not in the scripture. It just says here in the word and the few places I found in the word during catastrophes and it happened on the on the particular ninth day. I didn't go through all the scriptures because of time, but it doesn't say these details that they give. So just read if you want to read the the the, the rabbinical Judaism, the Kabbalah or other things dot uh, org and, and read their information of what to do during the time of uh just remember what's added and that's not real. If you want to do it, that's up to you. I, I, I did it before, an extreme. My wife and I, we practiced. We went to Israel. We lived there. We practiced traditional uh, rabbinical Judaism uh, of the feast. And then we went to the Word, and we searched for ourselves why we're there. And we see what's in the Word and not in the Word. And we start subtracting things. Some is not bad. Some is not. It's nothing wrong with lighting a candle over there on the side, but doing all that blowing the fire to your face, smoke and mystical Kabbalah stuff and other stuff that's not in the Word. Okay, so when you find the roots in in, in, in Kabbalism, there's a problem. And, and one of the things is I, I'm going to look at. I'm going to show. I'm going to go back to the this other website as we get ready to close. I hope you. Uh, I pray. I I trust. Excuse me. That you enjoyed this time that we had to, uh, so it says here that they traditionally read the Talmud writings, traditionally read the Talmud writings, uh, the, uh, the add-on uh, Mishnah uh, scriptures, or the commentary add-on stuff, like the Christians do, and we used to do in the Christian community. You know, there was no money, but money, bunny rabbits and eggs, and there was no trees. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had all that garbage in the tradition. So we just want to love on them and pray for our sisters and brothers. I, I, I weep. I, when we ministered a few weeks ago to a friend, and she's total Yehudi. She's renounced everything that she renounced the Moshiach, Moshi, but now she's accepting the Moshiach back. She renounced Talmud. And, the, and the, all the garbage of those rituals. You know, one of the 16 degrees of Masons, and also the Shriner Masons, which is, oh, their first heckle temple to the Shriner Masons, oh, their first heckle to Shalomo, backslider Solomon. 
and his little pagan wife that, that built the, the temple in her, her house next to the temple up in another place outside the, the, the gates of Jerusalem. You've got to realize something. That the second heckle and the design of the third is not, they, they looks like it's going to be according to the measurements and the size of Shalomon. But you realize that Shalomon backslide. And when he backslide, he gave this pattern of a heckle that when you got the Shriner Masons come from and the rabbis and it was passed to Christianity, their lodges, these Circes, These cult churches are mason lodges. They build in the construction. When I had my Baptist manual, it had a section and chapter for the mason's burial. Mason burial and weddings and stuff like that and how to communicate with a fellow mason of the craft to come in, the worshipful masters and all that, and work together with the, with the Baptists. When I saw in my graduation book, it shows the mission statement, how to do the mission statement, how to get the 51C3. It shows where to line up the pulpit. You could have choices, but they put it a certain way. The, the way they build the temple is exactly the word temple, a pagan place for the Agora, the Circe, the goddesses of graces to let the lustful spirit be oozed out in the worship of those pagan songs. They don't have the right words. They're singing songs of those pagan deities. Well, I believe that the second devil, and also it's going to be especially the, the next one they built. And we don't. They, I even got a video on my U stream on my YouTube interviewing a, a rabbi from Poland. I says, and I wanted to hear from his mouth which way he went. If I would have used it anyways. He said, when the Moshiach comes, are we supposed to build the temple ahead of him? He said, no. We prepare everything. He's coming. He's the heckle. And he's sitting as, sitting as our malik and our sovereign. But yet there's these people rising up today that are trying to call themselves temple builders, soliciting money from all these Christian communities. And they feel so good. They feel so, oh, uh, like when we, used to, when we were back in the old days, we give to the poor and say, I did my good deed of the day, you know. And, and that, that's nothing. That's if You earned that for the day of that day and nothing for eternity. And so I believe that this pattern of the lodges is the pattern of the temple of Shalamo because they have a replica in Washington and they have a replica in Canada of the exact scale measurements. They say the temple of Solomon, these lodges of Illuminati masons. But when you look at it, it's straight up pagan Babylonian type of look okay so we have to realize that they're going to build it not in the original they're going to add their Babylonian temple instead of Hekel of Yahuwah he dwells in us now by the and the Ruach Kadosh lives in us and we're the Hekel for him to dwell in that's why we must be Kodesh in every aspect of way and we just love you and thank you for tuning in for this Shabbat as we get prayer prepared for the ninth of Av, stay in prayer, keep your family in prayer, keep this nation in prayer. They're going to have a false flag, I believe, very soon. And it could be in Israel. It could be, I believe, it started already in Africa, working to Europe. They're on the news now, uh, Ebola disease, giving hints of spreading. They're spraying it already. All they do is do some little magic show with spray to get us kick-started. And so we got to build our immune system with black elderberry and some olive leaves, get the olive leaves in oil form and get some black elderberry and start preparing your immune system uh, with all kinds of stuff. But get the elderberry now and get the olive oil now to protect you from Ebola and other viruses and insect stuff. Anyway, so we just prepare ourselves and get our immune system right with the Torah, with the Shabbat, eating the right things, drinking the right things. And preparing ourselves and for his return and we're ready we're ready for whatever's going to happen and I believe it's going to be the land of Goshen for us wherever we're at or where he tells us to go and be so Shabbat Shalom enjoy your, your Shabbat